Hey guys, Alex from 7th Hour Films, back again with Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. My god, it's been so long for me. But yeah, last time around we had the Immortal Legion. Um, look, okay, it's been like a month or so since I've watched Full Metal. Um, so I'm gonna try to remember what, what happened. Uh, just judging off of the thumbnail here on Crunchyroll... Uh, Olivier was fighting Sloth. I believe uh, Alex came in at some point and was helping too. Um, I don't remember what was going on with Ed or Roy. I know they were doing stuff. That, I mean, they're they're attacking Central, but I don't remember what else. Oh, yeah, the Immortal Legion. Yeah, so Ed, Scar, and two of the Chimeras are down under, uh, down under one of the laboratories, I think. Uh, they're actually at the spot where Roy killed Lust, and they're fighting off the Immortal Legion. That's right. Roy, I think Roy... Roy called Havoc, because Havoc is uh, bringing in ammunition and stuff, I think. Was that this episode, or was that last... Was that episode 51, or was that episode 50? I can't remember. Mm, I don't know. Uh... Uh, Hohenheim is on his own because he let Lanfan go look for Ling. Meanwhile, uh, Kimberly showed up at uh, the at the town where Al and Pride were, and his name was Pride, right? Yeah, it was Pride. Yeah, and just suddenly I was like, wait a minute, that was his name, right? Um, yeah, and so that was a problem. But then uh, Al took. The Philosopher's Stone from uh, Heinkel, I think. And now he's ready to fuck these people up. So, that's at least good. And yeah, that's actually a decent enough recap, I think. So yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while, but hopefully there won't be any more breaks. Uh, you know, barring I get sick again, basically. So, like always, the reaction is down in the description and the pinned comment for your viewing pleasure. So let's go ahead and jump right into this episode of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, it is good to be back, folks. Uh, finally, my boy, my boy can burn things again. Oh, man, oh, man. You know, <clears throat> friend, I really like Olivier. Okay, here's the thing. Because <laughs> I only know this voice actress from two other roles. One, in My Hero Academia, when she occasionally shows up to voice Nanashimura. And then uh, Spy Family, because I've been watching Spy Family on my own, and I've been watching both the sub and the dub, and in the dub, she voices Handler and, you know, Twilight's boss. And on top of that, also voicing Olivier in this, I could listen to this woman's voice all fucking day. Because every, like, pretty much every time... It's badass, you know? Now, granted, we don't get too many moments like that in MHA because she shows up, like, once every 55 episodes or whatever, you know? She just shows up for a flashback to be, you know, All Might's mentor and stuff. But now, you know, just listening to her as Olivier and then listening to her as fucking Handler in Spy Family, she's just, ugh, her voice is just, it's, it's just like, all right, you need, like, this, you know, really cool badass woman. All right. Get her, clearly. I almost knocked my fucking drink off. You get her, clearly. Because she is so fucking good. And yeah, just Olivia just holding the gun. Just, well, what's it gonna be, you coward? It's like, oh, shit. Uh, so, so yeah. I could listen to her voice all fucking day. Oh, uh, it makes me want a fucking prequel series to my hero where she's the main character, you know? Uh That'd be cool, even though it would probably, you know, obviously it ends in tragedy. I don't care, because I want more of her, you know? <clears throat> anyway. And this is on top of the other badass voices in this show. Namely, at the end, Roy Mustang, you know? But between Roy, I mean, Riza, Scar, just all of them. Just everybody has a good badass voice, but hers, ugh. 
And it's kind of funny too because it's obviously it's the it's also the juxtaposition against Alex, uh, against Alex Louise Armstrong as well, because you know it, w- with Alex it's it's Chris Sabat, all right, you know it's Chris Sabat. Chris Sabat has a fucking epic voice, but I love it here because it's it's a bit more comical, you know. It's like oh well, we can't have that now, can we? You know. Like, he, he obviously plays it a bit more comical because the character is, you know, th- he's, he's not playing Vegeta. Which is interesting because as someone who, you know, getting into anime, the, one of the first things I watched is Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. So hearing that is sort of the iconic Chris Sabat voice as Vegeta. And then I move on and it's like, oh, that's like different. Everything else he does is the Chris Sabat voice, you know? Because Alex and All Might sound awesome almost the same it's just that one's a little bit goofy well even then you know like early my hero academia when he's you know rod i'm all might you know the symbol of peace you know it's like he was kind of goofy too at the beginning so so having it, it's the juxtaposition of and and yeah it's the, just the juxtaposition of their characters let alone their voices of you know this this really jack like this dude gives jojo characters a run for his money like, this dude is jacked, but he's also kind of goofy, you know? And here's his, you know, here's his sister, who, you know, it, she's it's not, like, super, you know, it's not much of a difference in size, you know, she's not, like, a freaking lolly or something, she's, she's a grown woman, but just the juxtaposition between the two of them, and she's clearly the more serious, determined, badass one. It's like, oh, shit, you know? But, we did get to see... A bit of Alex being badass as well. When he just drove a spike through uh, Sloth, which was great. So, yeah. So, basically, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, we had Al fighting Pride and Kimberly. I just, I know I say this like every episode. Just ready for Pride to die, man. Just the smug fucking face he has. Like, oh. You humans, you, you, you humans, you humans, you're just not as good as me. I'm just so fucking cool. It's like, bitch, you got hit by a car. Fuck right the hell off, you know? You got hit by a car by Yoki. Fuck right the hell off, you know? Just, like, don't even with it. I'm so... Ugh. I think it's also just the fact that he's that he is portrayed as a child and it's like i don't need any smug fucking children you know look at me i'm a grown-ass man with a grown-ass beard i don't fucking need this i guess that is one thing that is one thing about uh wrath is that's like well yeah he is older so it's like oh you know even without you know knowing that he's a homunculus it's like this this dude's clearly been around the block a couple times which is ironic, because Pride's been around the block longer, you know? But it's just, ah, oh, smug fucking faces. And again, it, it works, it, smug faces work for cartoon villains. Envy is a cartoony villain, and I, I freaking love Envy. I love when Envy, like, I'm not really waiting for Envy to die. I feel like it's gonna happen, but I'm not really waiting for Envy to die. I'm waiting for Pride to die, you know? Waiting for this fucking kid and uh, you know what i think it's just because he's a kid i cannot stand smug ass villain kids you know there's there's a slight similarity uh speaking of anime i'm watching on my own time uh i've been watching uh magical girl lyrical nanoha and i'm currently in uh the the strikers season so the third season and there are so many freaking like cyborg villains or whatever. I can't really remember who they all are. Like I don't remember any of them. But just I just oh I hate these smug fucking and that that does sort of that's like a whole problem with Nanoha is like these overpowered villains who just think well nothing's gonna happen to us. We're fine. It just it's underestimating the heroes. I hate that. You know, like no you can't. You can't underestimate your the heroes. I hate that so much, you know? And it's because I've been watching these heroes. In this case, 52 episodes I have seen of Ed and Al. And here's some shit little kid. And he's just like, oh, I'm so much better than you. You humans. You're just shit. And it's like, 
You got hit by a car, bitch. No, no, no. You know? Uh, I don't know. I could cite another, like, show example, but I don't... I don't know. I think I've made my point. Just fucking... Got hit by a car. The kid fin... And finally, because that's what he said in his backstory, he didn't get hit by a car. And it's like, oh, well, now you did. Now you did, bitch. Uh, speaking of being hit by a car... Sloth. Sloth was basically being hit... It's being hit by a thousand cars, you know? Uh... So, that's an interesting thing. And I guess it makes sense that it's that he's... Because he's the strongest, you know? He's the strongest one. So, that also equates to speed. He puts that strength into his speed. Problem is, he can't control it, you know? And, yes, it's ironic that Sloth would be the fastest of them. I'm the fastest in the universe. Ugh. But, yeah, so, there's that. Um, and I do like, again, because they, they showed that when... Uh, when, like, the dust settled and, like, you know, Alex got up and he just saw Olivia just on the ground. And I was, like, I, at first I was, like, oh, shit, I hope she's not, like, super injured or dies or anything. And But I was kind of joking, like, ah, give her a minute. She's tough. She'll be all right. And sure enough, like, two minutes later she gets up, like, oh, yeah. All right, let's go. <laughs> you know, like, this, this woman is so fucking strong, you know, that it's, like, even though she got, she literally got her shit kicked. She got back up and it's, like... Okay, where's my sword? I will kill him, you know? Uh, but we did also have the thing of, you know, the the philosophical talk with Kimberly. Which, how many philosophical talks with Kimberly can we have, you know? Like, I'm so tired of this guy and his we live in a society bullshit, you know? But, but yeah, it's like, oh. It, you know, Al's saying, oh, why can't we have both? Why not both, you know? Why can't, you know, we save everybody and get get our bodies back? And Kimberly's like, well, there's also the possibility that neither of those things will happen. And it's like, so great. All we've established is that anything could be happening. So, I don't know. I love that Heinkel fucking killed him, though. Well, almost killed him. Mortally injured him. So, yay, Heinkel. And Dr. Marco was there, too. And then Yoki just fucking hit uh, Pride with a car. It's great. Um, sweep the legs. Sweep the legs. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. The problem is there's just too many of them. But uh, I love now that it's like, oh, Roy's here. Roy has flames. It's like, oh, yeah, why don't we burn them to death? Like, that's a great idea. So let's do that. Um, and then, yeah, the whole thing with Olivier just being a badass is like, well, if you're going to shoot me, shoot me. If not, let me, we'll deal with this shit, you know? So, these poor, I hope these poor soldiers freaking defect and, and get the protection of the Armstrongs, you know? I also love, too, when, when it's like, oh, they have orders to shoot me, and Alex is kind of joking, he's like, oh, well, you can't have, you can't have them killing you, because then the estate will pass to me, and she just one-ups him with, no, I've already, I've already signed it away, so that if I die, it goes to Roy Mustang, who's only marginally more preferable to you, and it's like, oh, I love that, because, because, yeah, it's like, it's, it's Alex being like, oh, well, you can't die, because then the house will go to me, and she already has, has a one-up, like, no, it's going to Roy. I still don't want that to happen, but it's slightly better than going to you. And especially in this, where I kind of thought, you know, when they were both injured, like, when he was like, uh, it's, uh, my, my shoulder's dislocated, but I'll be alright, what about you? And it's like, I got some, got some broken ribs. You know, I, I thought, it was like, oh, this is like a bonding, they're bonding over their own pain, you know? It's like, oh, hey, maybe this will, you know, maybe Olivier will put a little respect on her brother's name, and it's like, only a smidge and that smidge is not enough to leave the house to alex instead of roy so but it's a smidge it's progress so yeah so yeah good stuff and i'm excited to see where we are going next time but that is basically it with all that being said i'm alex from seventh hour films and i will see you guys next time take care Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. There's a bunch of links on screen if you want to go click around any of those. There's a playlist for all of my Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood reactions, as well as another video you can go click on if you want. There's also a subscribe button and a Patreon button, as, uh, and other links in the description if you want to go check out any of those. See you guys later.